Merritt, let, let's start this first edition uh, by looking back on last year. Another very successful season for the Timbers, making it all the way to MLS Cup. Uh, when you look back uh, on the season, what do you think about? Well, first of all, I just want to echo your sentiments, uh, thoughts definitely with Ross uh, and his family. But uh, in terms of 2018, you know, it, it was as incredible a season mm -hmm in many ways as, as, as we've had and certainly as gratifying uh, a season as we've had. And I frankly think it's one of the more misunderstood and um, maybe, you know, not fairly recognized seasons we've had. You know, we bring in a new coach, um, make some significant personnel moves right out of the gate with Darlington Nagby and, you know, midway through the season with Adi, cornerstone pieces of, 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 of prior teams. You know, you, you put the new guy on the road for, for five games. He's, he's, you know, not necessarily able to play the way he wants to play, that high-pressing possession style, some of its personnel, some of its number of other things. And he, he, he comes to me and he says, look, you know, we've got we've to get some results. I'm going to do some things tactically that aren't going to be as aesthetically pleasing, but, you know, we're going to build this collective spirit. And that's exactly what he did. And I, I certainly gave the, the green light there. And, and, you know, we moved to the Christmas tree and, and the incredible streak. And, um, you know, if, if you're going to judge a season on expected goals or, or, or other stats uh, alone, you know, you, you, you kind of miss the, the, the headline, I think, with 2018. We, we got through a little dip in August, maybe don't rotate enough, but we build, you know, back to that 4-2-3-1. And, and come out of the regular season as good a team in the West, clearly, uh, as there is. And then you look at what we do in the playoffs against very good teams. Dallas, Seattle, Kansas City, two goals on the road at Dallas, man down no less. Seattle, three goals on the road. And we're not talking about, you know, just for sake of argument, a keeper error a bad clearance and a penalty kick. I mean, these are goals that that, that we're earning, and, and 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 gorgeous soccer, and 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 again building from the back, and and uh, you know terrific attacking soccer. And then Kansas City, which was as difficult opponent, frankly, as as we faced to go into their house um, and put three goals on them on the road. This isn't a fluky deal. This isn't an average team that got lucky. This was a team that took a step back, did some things tactically. To, to get the core collective in and started building towards the end of the season. And, you know, it's, it's just every coach and GM in the league you talk to recognizes what a powerhouse the Timbers are. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure the media always does, and maybe it's that we're a smaller market. Seattle wins MLS Cup with no shots on goal and mm -hmm. wins in PKs, and it's yeah. all about their defense and, you know, sort of the, the, the coronation of different super teams, and we've never been that super teams. And, 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 you know, look, all the credit to Atlanta and everything they achieved off the field, but in the final, they sat and countered. They got two lucky goals. We, uh, we could have done more offensively, to be certain. Um, they deserved it, but it was a clear away game. Um, you know, we outplayed them in the second half. This was not a dominant game on the field. And, you know, after the game, we don't even get medals, which is the first time I've seen a runner-up not do that. So I guess I get the narratives there, but, um, and, and again, I think it's special what they built in Atlanta, but uh, th this is a team that didn't get its due, you know, from media and some fans, and that's fine. That kind of stuff fuels me, but, um, you know, certainly anybody who knows anything about soccer uh, is pretty aware of what we did, what Geo did, and, and it's something I'm really proud of. Now, Merritt, uh, as you look uh, back uh, at the offseason and you look forward to this coming season, uh, you always want to have uh, depth and competition on your squad. Uh, you know, where are you looking uh, to, to improve and, and what moves are you looking to make this season? Well, you know, we, we obviously had um, a couple key departures this offseason, um, starting with your former um, uh, <laughs> buddy uh, it, it, on the, the, your left shoulder yep. there in the back line. Big loss, as you know better than anybody, not yeah. just on the pitch, but, but what he brought off the field. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we did a good – we've got a, a really good, talented young core at center back, um, and, and those are guys we want to continue to have opportunities. Larius is a guy who should have been a contender for Defender of the Year. Statistically, he was the best center back um, in, in Major League Soccer last year, or, or, or on, the, on the very short list. He was not any, 
you know, uh, it wasn't up on the short list for, for people to vote, but he, again, in the vein of not getting the credit. Um, but I think uh, uh, Dilno was a really uh, savvy addition, and I think he'll, uh, you know, add a lot. Frankly, this year, you talk about depth of the roster, we'll probably, with, with the truncated season and midweek games, we're probably going to see more roster turnover, not just with our team, um, you know, as, you know, all across the league as we've ever seen before. And I think um, depth is going to be a lot more important this year. I mean, people are going to get minutes. Um, and, and having um, positions that are two, three deep is going to be uh, really critical. Uh, made a big uh, addition at, at the goalkeeper spot. Um, we got a right back who we think can be a top right back um, in, in MLS. And, you know, we talked about the need for um, a, another striker. That wasn't a, a, a position that we had to add uh, by, uh, you know, March 1st. It, it, and we've got 12 games on the road, guys. It, yeah, this is going to yeah. be a tough stretch to put any new at attacker in into. And, and frankly, we're going after a pedigree of a player that teams aren't going to want to lose. Um, so we've had, you know, some, some media chatter when we've, when we've talked to a couple targets and two on a very difficult team. Um, to do business with, you know, as, as it happened. But, but we're not going after people that teams want to necessarily let go of. And, and conversely, we had an offer for a player this year that's by far the biggest offer we've ever received, and we didn't want to let go of guys. Sure. But, but this window, you know, teams are mid-season. It's not like the summer window. Yep. It's a tougher window to add talent, and uh, I, I feel like it's, it's, it's very probable we will add a DP prior to the end of uh, MLS's uh, window in early May. It's not something, though, I feel like we need to do either. We need to get the right guy. And, and we're engaged in talks with, with um, one guy uh, to, to add as an acquisition right now, another who'd be potentially uh, alone, um, but still a DP. But uh, at the same token, I feel really good about the strikers we've got in, in J-Bo, in Lucas, um, and, and also um, uh, Foster. Um, so, you know, we've got a lot of really good attacking depth. Uh, Tomas uh, Konechny had an unbelievable preseason. He's capable of playing all across the front line. Espria, uh, you know, Polo, we've got a lot of good attacking depth. So um, we've, we've got a luxury. It's a luxury for us. And when we add there, we're going to make sure it's the right fit. If we wanted to add somebody by March 1st, we would have done it uh, <laughs> uh, a while ago. But, mm -hmm. but again, it's about getting the right guys. So looking ahead, I feel like we've got a, a, a good, you know, really good team we had a good off season we're not done yet but um uh, we had a good off season giovanni severese has now been here for over a season what can you what have your observations been about the culture that, that he's built within the organization you said it uh culture i mean the culture of this club has never been stronger period it's a collective it's not a lot of i i i you know it's 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 all about we with geo and you know frankly when he should be saying i he still doesn't uh, and, and so top to bottom, this Portland Timbers culture has unequivocally never been better. And it's, 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 it's terrific. And, um, you know, when we brought Gio in, it was a, it was a relatively short contract. I'm in talks right now uh, to, to do a s extension uh, for him. I, hopefully he's going to be at this club a long time. We're also in talks with Gavin about, you know, a, a, a significant extension for him. So, you know, I feel like the club's in a very... In, in very good hands, um, you know, at, at, at the top, and also all the way through our assistant coaches, and you know, we've got we've got terrific people. The investment we made in sports science, um, which has been a significant step up, something that didn't get as much attention, but um, you know, that group's absolutely firing on all cylinders right now, and um, you know, feel great there. Merritt, when we have you on these shows, we like to talk big picture MLS. You're so plugged in, obviously, so influential uh, in the league. And this was an interesting offseason for MLS. Miguel Almiron going big money, record transfer to Newcastle. Alfonso Davies went midseason, but now he's in Bayern Munich. Tyler Adams also playing really well. Just three big name guys excelling in Europe. Do you see that as, as the future of MLS? Moves like that? It's transform transformational yeah. uh, times for MLS. And I, I'd be careful about characterizing the changes is MLS moving to being a selling league, yeah. but we're certainly a much more active participant in the global markets. Obviously, we, we're bringing a lot of talent in as well, yeah. but it's huge. It's, it's, it's massive, and it's something, frankly, from a Timbers standpoint, um, we have to take advantage of. Uh, the fact that Almiron and Adams are, are killing it out of the gate, there's going to be more, more eyes on MLS and more people looking at talent here, and we've got a core of young talent that we have to develop. We have to play. We have to build their asset value, and frankly, we're going to 
need to be able to be willing to sell some folks to continue to reinvest in our team. And, and, and again, we've got, you know, two great young center backs, uh, Loria, uh, uh, Jabo, um, you know, uh, it, it, no, no shortage of, 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 of folks, you know, Konechny, um, Polo, uh, Paredes, you know, a, a lot of good young talent. And not every one of those guys is going to hit, but uh, it's important that we're, we're very focused on, on playing that group and, and getting minutes for young folks and, and developing talent. And we've got a coach who does that. And who's willing to do that um, and, and just look at what happened with with, with Jabo last year so um, it's important for the league it's important for us before we chat about the the stadium construction which we want to get to every year when you come on you also give some predictions MLS kind of this year uh, what you no, think Nostradamus <laughs> <laughs> what's your view on MLS I was I'm, I'm one for two there I said yeah. a couple years ago I said the dynamo right was gonna be Houston. good I, I had the galaxy last year yeah. not so much there huh um, Look, I, I think the West is better than the East. Yeah. Uh, about that, all this talk about about you know how we'd move to the East last year. There's a couple big teams in the East who are clearly not as good as they have been. So, uh, and and I think th there's some teams in the West that have gotten a lot better. So that's one thing for certain. I, with, short of making predictions, um, you know, I think the Whitecaps are an interesting story. Um, they hired a coach who's a good coach, and they did massive turnover on their roster. Um, literally like 18 yeah. to 20 guys yeah. brought in some some new talent it's going to be interesting to see how mark um, gels that group and they got a striker who was a guy um, young striker who who we'd scouted a bit um, and, and, and like um, so uh, you know it, it'll be uh, it, it'll be interesting and, and Merritt, the team is, is, uh, has a big task ahead of itself uh, 12 games on the road for those people who don't know uh, what's the reason for that well, it's 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 a little project, um, to just just <laughs> some uh, dusting and, and and repainting we're doing at the stadium. Now, look, I mean, just I'll talk about the stadium in a minute. But last year we had five games on the road. I was hoping um, that that we'd have less than. Well, I'm glad that we had the deep run, which is part of the reason that we that we have the extended period on the road. So I, I'll be careful how I frame that. Um, but uh, it was challenging last year. I preached patience. Um, and this year, I'm going to do it again, although nobody's going to listen. Uh, 12 <laughs> games on the road is difficult. I mean, we, we don't have, we've got some more stability. We've got a team that's a, capable of going out and getting results. But, yep. man, it's going to be a real challenge um, for us this year. And there's a premium on the regular season this year as well with the mm -hmm. new revised playoff format. So, um, you know, we're going to have to navigate it. But in terms of the stadium, it's transformational. It's not an expansion. Um, it's a wholesale re renovation now, everything from the video board to the sound system to new locker rooms for both the Timbers and the Thorns, new west side concourses, a new big exit um, on the uh, west side uh, near 20th uh, Avenue, which should relieve some of the congestion, uh, mainly on ingress and egress, and obviously the new levels and it's going to be a wall of sound, so it's going to be tight getting it done by June 1st. Uh, hopefully we won't have too many more snow days like we're having today, <laughs> right. um, but, uh, but it will be transformational. I can't wait to see it. I mean, we had a great home field uh, atmosphere before. Yep. Man, it's going it, it's to be ramped up. Uh, with this new stadium. Yep. Going to be awesome. Can't wait for June 1st. I uh, do want to talk to you a little bit about looking more kind of further into the future. Uh, Timbers Academy and, and your thoughts on that. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, academies are becoming more and more in the forefront of the discussion uh, in MLS. Sure. Um, and, and I would just frame it more as a youth development sure. side. I mean, I mean, we'd have to start with our next uh, rung down in T2. Yeah. Is, which has never been better. And, and we're getting great talent out of, of T2. I mean, Zambrano and Loria, two guys who had great preseasons, two guys I'm really optimistic about um, being players. Um, Farfan was a guy I hadn't mentioned earlier on, you know, sort of the young core of, 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 of talent that's got potential value. He's a homegrown um, as well who we want to continue to see um, blossom. On, on the academy, you know, of all the things we're doing well right now, I mean, that, that's certainly an area that I got to We're one of the, we're on the upper half of spending on the academy, and we we've honestly don't have the same um, fruit to show as, as other markets do. And, and, and certainly there's things we can do better. Um, but, you know, we do have a challenging market, whether people want to admit that or not. There's, there's an inequity in, in homegrown territories, and you can run a really crap academy and have really good talent coming out of there you know, if you're in, 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 in certain markets, yeah. and, and we have a small territory. Um, so 
you know, I've got to take a hard look at, at what our investment is versus the return on the academy, figure out things we can do better. But I can tell you that, that youth development's core to what we do, and not just domestic talent, but international talent as well. I mean, you know, a guy like an Elvis Powell or, uh, you know, a Loria um, uh, and, 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 and uh, you know, folks, folks like that. Obviously, Elvis isn't here anymore, but, um, you know, we had him when he was 18 or 19. Finally, for me. Uh, you've been off Twitter for a few months. You vowed last year was your last season on Twitter. <laughs> How's it been being off Twitter? I can't tell you how good it's been. <laughs> 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 I, honestly, I mean, I, I, I'm here. I'm here with you guys. I'm still. I, I haven't gone anywhere, but uh, you know, I, I do. I can tr honestly tell you, I don't miss Twitter for for one moment. <laughs> yeah. There's, you know. There was a joke. I, I'd watch that. Uh, well, I won't even say. I won't even say it. See, I don't have to worry about this. <laughs> you know, every now and then I'll think of something that I think is funny. Probably yeah. nobody else does, and right. I think you know I might tweet that. But uh, um, it, you know, at the same token, it, it, Twitter got a little toxic, honestly, yeah. um, and it's a little insular. And and uh, um, I'm, I'm happy to be off it. Well, Merritt, we appreciate you using this as your platform. Thanks so much for joining us on the season debut of Timbers and 30. Good luck this season to the Timbers and the Thorns, of course, as well.